بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد We should always attempt to be respectful and kind towards one another and strive our best to meet the rights of one another the rights first and foremost of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the rights of the makhlukin you know of those things everything that's uh, created by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and earth and unfortunately we all fall short in this regard and we're in all we're all in need of tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're all in need of repentance by feeling sorrow for what we've done by being firm on leaving the sins that we have uh, committed and striving our best to remove ourselves from the environment feeling sorrow and making istighfar to Allah seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and earth and so this hadith illustrates for us the importance of meeting the haq of Allah or honoring the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of his creation and that when we fall short that we should strive to cover our shortcomings and our bad deeds with that which is good an abi dharrin Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma An Abi Dharrin wa Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma Anna Rasulillahi Anna Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Ittaqi la haythu ma kunt Wa attabi' sayyat al-hasanata tamhuhaha وخالق ال وخالق الناس بخلق حسن رواه أبو داود وأحمد وترمذي وغيرهم بإسناد حسن. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, which was uh, narrated by Abi Dhar and Mu'adh bin Jabal, and may Allah be pleased with them both, and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى be pleased with all the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Where they said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Fear Allah as much as you can, and follow up a bad deed. Following up a bad deed with a good deed uh, expiates it or erases it, and treat the people with good manners." And this was collected in Abu Dawood, Sunan Abi Dawood. Wa Ahmed wa Tirmidhi. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as we mentioned, that it deals with the hakuk and uh, hakuk Allah, wa hakuk al-makhlukin. That it deals with the rights of Allah, the Almighty, to be worshipped alone and feared, and the rights of the makhlukin. Now, how does this deal with the rights of Allah? Because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ittaqi Allaha haythu ma kun." He said, "Fear Allah wherever, uh, uh, wherever you may be, okay, and in any situation." By fearing Allah subhanahu wa taala, that means that we are worshiping Him and Him alone, following His commandments. And avoiding the things that he Subhanahu wa Taala has prohibited, this is how the believer uh, exhibits or shows his or her fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and earth, by fearing those things and avoiding those things which will lead a person to the hellfire, and doing those things which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has commanded. And that is how we can attain God fearfulness. 
Also, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kutiba alaykum siyama kama kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ladina min kablakum laalakum tatakun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would have taqwa, in order that you would have God fearfulness. So that's another way we can attain taqwa, taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ إِنَّ اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have ordered, or we have, uh, we have ordered and we have exhorted those who came before you, those who were given the book uh, before you, that you... To be, you should be uh, fearful, to f- be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, it was enjoined upon the people, the people who, who were given the book before, Ahli Kitab, the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. And as well as this Ummah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ وَسَيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and that we have exhorted those who were given the book from before you, وَإِيَّاكُمْ and you as well. So it's a very stern uh, advice, if you want to say, or exhortion to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have taqwa, have God-fearfulness. Avoid those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, commanded us to avoid and has prohibited for us and doing those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do. And this includes so this includes doing those things which are obligations and avoiding and for a person to avoid those things which uh, Allah has commanded us to uh, avoid, those things which are prohibited. And as the Prophet wasallam said in the hadith that we are uh, discussing, Haythama kunt, meaning in any place, in any time that you should maintain this taqwa, this presence of being aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you, having the God fearfulness and avoiding the evil. So that means in the depths of the night, you're fearing Allah. You're not thinking, okay, everyone else is asleep. I can do this sin, or I can do engage in this, or I can go to this place. And during the day when you're secluded, that you're, that you're being aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, is watching you. So that's having taqwa. Having taqwa is not is is what we're commanded to do, but unfortunately we see many of our brothers and sisters following the opposite. And a clear example is when we uh, watch some of our brothers and sisters when they leave uh, a place where the religion is strong and they go to other places they travel and they travel for sinful purposes. A lot of the women you see they they're running to come out of their hijab. They, they're they throwing it off. Next thing you know, uh, you look to the right, and she, uh, when she got on the airplane, she's in full niqab, you know, covering her face, covering her whole body. Within five minutes of entering the airplane, it's uh, a t-shirt, which the, the stomach is out, and tight jeans, and sometimes even worse than this. So this shows us that all of us are in need of Taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're in need of reminding ourselves and reminding our brothers and sisters of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that this God fearfulness is not restricted to a particular place it's not particular uh, restricted to just being in the in the masjid it's not restricted to being in front of the people it's not restricted to being in front of our, our brothers and sisters that are trying to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but rather this is as the Prophet ﷺ said, Haythama kunt, every place, wherever you may be, 
So that is that shows us the importance of having taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And regardless of whether it's in, in the day or the night or who is watching us, knowing full well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything you, you do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa'budu Rabbaka hatta yatika al yaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and worship your Lord until yaqeen certainty comes to you and certainty as the Mufassirin mentioned is death it's the ending of this life that you should worship Allah until your soul is taken so how does that relate to taqwa it relates to taqwa because taqwa is a form of ibadah it's one of the greatest forms of ibadah the greatest forms of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, at any and all times and is and is all is aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of what they do. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his ilm is all encompassing and he sees everything. Basir. That Allah sees everything and he is aware of all things and he hears all things. So that helps the believer, the one who's truly exhibiting Tawheed uh, to practice taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to practice fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they're aware that Allah is watching and sees and hears everything they do and may Allah bless us to be of the muttaqin those people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in this hadith as well he said what uh, al hasanata tamhuha he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then follow the, uh, an evil deed with something that is good and that will erase it or remove it or expiate it so following uh, something following an evil deed with something good is something we should also encourage ourselves to do or we should encourage ourselves better yet to always try to do good deeds as much as possible and never think that a deed is too small if it is uh, removing uh, a stick or something harmful in the road then take that time out and remove it from the road. As the Prophet wasallam said, that that's a type of, uh, that's a, a show of iman. That's a type of, that's a level of iman. And a part of iman is doing those small deeds. Whether it be smiling at your brothers and sisters. Whether it be admonishing or giving a good and kind uh, word. Or greeting someone. All of these are ways to do something righteous and good and they will all remove bad deeds and especially we should strive to do these things after we have done something sinful that we are aware of if we've done something sinful we fell into something then we should strive our best to try to remove it with something good as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in this hadith that that will erase it that those that's one of the mukaffarat al dhunub it is the one of the things that expiates a person's sins is that they do something righteous, do something good. And some of the ways in which we can do that is by seeking istighfar, seeking forgiveness from Allah. Another way is by iman, increasing our iman, doing those things which encourage us, listening to good uh, speeches, uh, attending the khutbah, the yawm al um, whatever increases your iman. Any, any, any actions of Iman. Also, just doing general righteous deeds as we just mentioned before. Making Tawbah to Allah, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, sickness also. When we are afflicted by sickness, don't think that these things do not have a positive effect and a, and a wisdom as well. For the believer, the sickness is also an expiation for, for the sins. And those are just some of the ways in which uh, we, we get forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge also is a way that we can, is a, a good deed that can remove sins. And it's a good deed if it is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, uh, you know, the angels, the angels and everything in creation will seek forgiveness for the talab al -alim, For the person seeking knowledge. And on top of that, that path is the path to Jannah. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man salaka tariqan yaltalmisuhu bihi ilmin sahala lahu lahu 
tariqan ila jannah the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said whoever traverses the path of knowledge man salaka tariqan yaltalmisuhu bihi ilman seeking knowledge islamic knowledge sahala Allah lahu tariqan ila jannah that allah will make easy for him the paradise so that shows us that's a, a means to attaining jannah that's also a way the more ilm you have the more and the more ilm the more knowledge you have and the more practice of that knowledge you'll have more taqwa it's not just memorizing it's not sufficient just to memorize there are many people we know who've memorized a lot of books they know the quran they've memorized riyad al-salihin they've memorized uh portions of bukhari and muslim but maybe they have the worst of manners maybe they sometimes do the worst of sins they've memorized all this but their practice is weak maybe they're the worst of sinners in certain aspects so this shows us that memorization of the knowledge is not sufficient that that is a a, sub, uh, a part of knowledge and it's a means to attaining knowledge but the understanding of that knowledge and the practice the tatbiq as the salaf used to say al ilm uh, uh, that al ilm huwa amal that al the fruits of knowledge or the fruit of knowledge uh, the fruit of attaining knowledge is practice so that your deeds should be the result of the knowledge you've achieved that shows that a person really has fiqh fi deen man yuridullahu bihi khayran yafqahu fi deen whenever allah wants good for a person he gives him understanding of the religion part of that understanding of the religion is what it's not just that you memorize not just you understood the hadith but you practice it not just that you read the tafsir but you practice that tafsir of the ayat of the verses of the quran you understand and you practice it you try to implement it in your daily life so all of these things are means to good deeds and are part of good deeds and they are part of taqwa as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the the most god fearful uh, of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's slaves is the ulama those people who have knowledge Allah has favored with knowledge so those people who have the knowledge from their memorization their understanding and their practice those people are those people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly and may Allah bless us to be of them some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is the obligation to have god fearfulness from Allah so when we're talking about this we're not just discussing something that is recommended that that we should strive to do but in fact it's something we have to do as muslims we have to do the commandments of Allah and stay away from those things prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also this hadith shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us and watches us for everything that we do Inna Allah alaykum raqiba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is ever watchful over you. This hadith also shows us the fadl of taqwa, the benefit of having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of God fearfulness. This hadith also shows us that good deeds they remove bad deeds. Walhamdulillah. Also this hadith shows us and it encourages us to strive to come back to Allah, to make tawbah to Allah to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which we've done. This hadith also shows us that we should strive to also honor the rights of uh, first and foremost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshiping him alone as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith of Mu'adh bin Jabal when Mu'adh was riding with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, on a donkey and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ya Mu'adh tadri ma haqqa Allah li ibadin wa ma haqqa Allah wa ma haqqa li ibadin ya Allah so the Prophet asked Mu'adh, do you know what Allah's right is over a slave? And do you know what the slave's right is over Allah? And then Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he responded by saying, uh, Allah wa Rasulullah a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. And then the Prophet sallallahu responded by saying, Haqqallah ala ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. That the right of Allah over his slaves is that, uh, that the slave worships Allah alone and he does not associate any partners with him. So that shows us that that is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right and that is uh, an obligation upon us to fulfill that right to worship Allah alone khalisan li wajhi kareem and also this hadith shows us to honor the rights of others as well that we should not forget the rights of our parents the rights of our near kin the rights of our uh 
our neighbors, the rights of our brothers and sisters in the, in the faith, the rights of uh, even non-Muslims, the rights of your neighbors, the rights of everyone. Everyone has some right over you. So actualizing and realizing the rights of other human beings and the creation, even the animals, is something we should strive to do and, and try to illustrate that in our conduct. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq in that. Um, Also, this hadith is a refutation for those people who try to divide the religion of Islam from uh, actions and deeds of this worldly life. Islam is a complete religion, complete way of life, complete system that encompasses everything on how we react in, and how we deal with one another in society, our deeds with uh, marriage our relations with ourselves, our relations with our creation, Creator, and the relations with the creation. Everything it's complete in Islam. Uh, also, this hadith shows us that we should have God-fearfulness wherever we are, that it isn't restricted to being in the masjid, it's not restricted to being around the brothers, or being restricted to being around the sisters, but rather that taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be uh, implemented everywhere. We should strive to be aware and know that Allah sees you, as this is a part of Ihsan. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked in the Hadith of Jibreel about Ihsan, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, "In ta'budullah ka'annaka turaf, in lam tukun turahu, fa innu yarak." The Prophet ﷺ said, "He said Ihsan, or God, uh, or, or um, uh, goodness and righteousness, it is." And Ta'budullah ka anna katara is worshipping Allah as uh, as if you see him. Fa in lam tukun turahu and since you can't see him, fa innu yarak, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. And this is first and foremost advice to myself and then to those who are listening, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us all with ikhlas. والثبات على سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم